Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Hey, <laughs> 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 oh look, there you are. Shh. What do you mean, Shush? What? Oh. I'm looking at the casting out of the money lenders. I don't care about that. I've been looking for you for the last half hour. We said we'd meet in front of the Flemish masters. No, we didn't. No, we never said anything of the sort. When I last saw you, you were in the Fisaro, weren't you? That's right. Well, I said I'd meet outside the abstract. We go through the old Greco, up the Van Eyck, and I'll see you in front of the bloody Rubens. <laughs> no. <laughs> I said I was going to go round the Velasquez, through the abstracts, up the impressionists, and then in front of the Flemish masters. No, you didn't, Dad. It doesn't matter anyway. Here, I have a sandwich. My feet are killing me. <laughs> What's that got to do with the sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, I just said it afterwards, that's well, all. Well, you shouldn't say things like that together. It could confuse a stupid person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Pete, I reckon, uh, I reckon there's a lot of rubbish in this gallery, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, not only rubbish, Dad, there's a lot of muck about. Yeah. I've been looking all over the place for something good. Yeah. I've been looking for that lovely green gypsy lady. You know, the one with yeah. Turkey Corey done? <laughs> with a lovely shining skin. Where is she? Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> so I went up to the manager. I said, yeah, I got him by the collar. I said, here. Yeah. yeah. I said, here. Yeah. Threatening him. <laughs> you didn't spit sandwich at him, did you? <laughs> I'm sorry, Pete. Blimey. I'm sorry about that. No, I said, here. Yeah. yeah, you'll do it again if you're not careful. <laughs> I said, wait. <laughs> Come on, what'd you say, Dad? I said, where's that bloody Chinese flying horse in? What did he say? He said, get out. <laughs> So I had, to, I had to run up the impressionists for half an hour, and I had yeah. Yeah. You know, but, but what I can't understand, frankly, Pete, is that uh, there's not a Vernon Ward gallery in here. There's not a duck in the building. There's no Peter Scott. There's no Vernon Ward. Not a duck to be seen. Nothing. <laughs> no. And a marvellous thing about Vernon Ward is, of course, he's been doing ducks all his life. Well, he's done more ducks than you've had hot breakfast done. <laughs> He's done plenty of ducks. If he's done anything, he's done ducks. Yeah. He's done ducks in all positions. Yeah. <laughs> ducks in the morning. Ducks, <laughs> ducks in the morning. Ducks in the evening. Ducks in the summertime. What's that song? That's ducks, ducks in the morning. Ducks in the evening. Ducks in the summertime. <laughs> Yeah. I thought well, I recognised it. Of course you did, you said it. Yeah. Uh, the thing what makes you know that Vernon Ward is a good painter, if you look at his ducks, have you ever looked at his ducks? Yeah. If you look at his ducks, you see the eyes follow you around the room. <laughs> you notice that? Yeah. If please. you see 16 of his ducks, you see 32 little eyes following you around the room. No, you only see 16 because they're flying sideways and you can't see the other eye on the other side. No, but you get the impression, Dad, that the other eye is craning round the beak to look at you, don't you? <laughs> yeah. That's a sign of a good painting, Dad. If the eyes follow you around the room, it's a good painting. If they don't, it isn't. Yeah, it's funny you say that, Pete, because I was in the bathroom the other day. Of course you were, Dad, oh. I remember that. Of course I was, Pete. <laughs> and uh, I had the feeling... I had the feeling of somebody in the room with me, you know. Yeah. I thought, funny, you know. <laughs> Bathroom door locked, you know, funny. Come in the room with me. Funny, you know. Yeah. Didn't see no one coming. I thought, funny. you know, felt these eyes burning in the back of my head. Funny, you know. <laughs> so, uh, I whip round like a flash. I see the bloody laughing cavalier up there. <laughs> having a giggle. I think, yeah, I felt so embarrassed, you know. You would, yeah. So I went out the bathroom and I went across to Mrs. Connolly's across the road and asked if I could use her toilet. Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, you feel a bit daft with her, somebody looking at the back of you. Yeah. She's, she's all right, though, because she's only got a bowl of pansies in her toilet. A real bowl of pansies or a painting, Dad? A uh, real painting, Pete. Oh, that's all yeah. right, then. I'll tell you what's even worse, Dad, than the laughing cavalier. What's that, Pete? Can you think of anything worse? No, There Pete. is something worse than the laughing cavalier, which my Auntie Muriel has. She has the bloody Mona Lisa in her, no, in her really? toilet, yes. That's dreadful, that yeah. awful sniffy look about her, looking so superior, you know, <laughs> peering down at you. She looks as if she'd never been to the lab in the life. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's the thing about the laughing cavalier, at least he has a giggle, he doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Don't sit there all prissy. No, mate. No. Disapproving of you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's dreadful. Yeah. Have you been down the Rubens? No. You haven't seen the Rubens? No. That's right over there. Who's there? Yes, lovely. He does all the fat ladies with nothing on. Great pink fat ladies. Yeah. Except for a tiny little wisp of gauze. Always lands on the appropriate place, if you know what Yeah. Always the wind blows a little bit of gauze over you know where now. Yeah. <laughs> See it down there, course, can't you? Of course, you know, it must be a million to one chance, Pete, that the gauze you know, lands in the right place at the right time is, yeah. when he's painting. I bet there's thousands of paintings that we're not allowed to see where the, where the cause and la landed in the, in the right place, yeah. you know, it's on their nose or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I suppose if the gorse landed on the wrong place, Dad, you know, landed on the nose or the elbow or somewhere unimportant, what Rubens did was put down his paint and went off to have lunch, probably. Yeah. Or have a good look. Yeah. One of the two. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you don't get gorse floating around in the air these days, do no, you, you, like you did in Renaissance time. No. There's always gorse in the air in those days. Yeah. Of course, uh, similarly, you don't, you don't get them, um, and then Botticelli cherubs oh, about lovely, place. little Botticelli things, yeah. I love them. They've all gone. Yeah. They've died out, of course. I hunted them down for their sink silken skin, you know, Dad. <laughs> no, they couldn't, they couldn't kill them, Pete, because they were immortal. No, they weren't. They shot them through with arrows through their tiny little bellies, and then oh. their skin was turned into underwear for rich ladies. Oh, no. <laughs> what happened? I reckon they went up to heaven like the angels. No, they didn't. Of course, uh, of course, there's no call for angels now. No, you don't really? see much of them these days, no, do you? No. Uh, Mrs. Wisby saw one actually the other day in the garden. Yeah. Yeah, she saw this angel. Actually, it turned out to be a burglar. She went down. She went down on her knees praying to it. It was in the kitchen whipping away her silver. Nasty <laughs> busy. Yeah, terrible. Have you seen that bloody Leonardo da Vinci cartoon? No. I couldn't see the bloody joke. <laughs> Went down there, nothing. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, Peter, uh, a sense of humour must have changed over the years, well, you know. Of course it has. That's why it's I, not funny. No. I bet when that Da Vinci cartoon first came out, I bet people were killing themselves. <laughs> you know? I bet, I bet old Da Vinci had an accident when he done it. Yeah. <laughs> But it's difficult to see the joke, just that lady sitting there with the children round her. It's not much of a joke as far as I'm concerned, Dad. Uh. No, well, apart from that, Pete, it's a different culture. Yeah. It's, it's Italian, you it's see. Italian, eight, eight yeah, we, don't, we don't understand it. I mean, for instance, the mousetrap did terribly in Pakistan. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> Another thing we've wasted money on is that bloody Cezanne, Grand Baigneurs. Yeah. Have you seen that load of rubbish? No. It's over there. Oh, there yeah. There it is, those fat nude ladies with their bottoms towards you. Yeah. That's Les Grand Baigneurs. You know what it means, don't you? What's it? Big bathers. Is that all? That's all it means. Yeah. Big bathers. 500,000 quid we pay for that. Those nude women come out of our pocket. Done. Yeah. Works out about £50,000 of body, didn't it? Well, you could get the real nude ladies over there for that price. Yeah. <laughs> My Aunt Dolly would have done it for nothing. <laughs> she does anything for nothing, doesn't she, Aunt Dolly? Yeah. Feel the old cow. <laughs> Are you enjoying that sandwich? <laughs> Mine's appalling, I'll tell you that much. It's worse than the paintings, my uh, family. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to that, Pete. <laughs> you can't tell. I oh, know, you've just seen the Leonardo da Vinci joke, have you? Yeah. <laughs> but, no. I must say, you can't tell whether that's a good painting or not because you can't see their eyes, whether they follow you around the room. <laughs> No, the sign of a good painting like that, Dad, with their backs towards you, is if the bottoms follow you around the room. <laughs> if it's a good painting, the bottoms would follow you around the room. All right? Yeah. So I'll test it then. You go and have a look. Yeah, all right. I'll go and see if they... They, won't, they won't bloody budge, I tell you that, mate. <laughs> Not that bloody bloody. Of course, I can't look directly at it, no. otherwise, you know, they'll know I'm looking and yeah. they'll get all cagey. I'll go, you know, quick bite. <laughs> Are they moving, Dad? I think they're following me, Pete. I don't think they are, Dad. I reckon they are, Pete. No, those bottoms aren't following you around the room. Your eyes are following the bottoms around the room. <laughs> Same thing, isn't it? Of course it isn't. A good deal of difference being followed by a bottom and you following a bottom. It's totally different. Well, you come here then. You see what I mean. 
I don't see anything at all, just a load of bottoms, extremely stationary to me. Well, you go that way and I'll go this way and you see if your bottoms move the same as mine. It'll be a bit difficult for the bottoms, won't we, if you go in different directions. <laughs> well, they'll divide up amongst themselves. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all Mine are moving, Pete, I'll tell you. Oh, my bottoms haven't moved, Dan. Mine are going berserk. No, mine are not at all. Mine's moving, Pete. Oh, there goes one of yours. That's right. Oh, it's rushing all over the place. It's coming after you, Dad. No, it can't be daft, Pete. See you in the Dutch Masters. Right, oh, no, tell on. <laughs>
dirty Uncle Bertie and they're right, Roger. Your Uncle Bertie is a dirty, dirty man. <laughs> He's been living with us now for 40 years. And it does seem a day too much. <laughs> you know, if it hadn't been for your mother, Roger, I'd, I don't know where we'd have been. She's the only person who can really cope with Uncle Bertie. She's the only one who can really deal with him. I don't know if you realize this, Roger, but your mother even has to sleep in the same bed as Uncle Bertie to prevent him getting up to anything in the night. <laughs> if only there were more people like your mother, Roger. Well, I'm, I'm very pleased that you have told me this, sir, because, as I say, I'm very glad I don't have to believe all those filthy things that the boys at school say. And only yesterday, Uncle Bertie said to me... Take no notice of Uncle Bertie, Roger. He's a sick, sick man, and we should feel sorry for him. Well, I'll, I'll try, sir. <sighs> well, thank you, sir. Um, I wonder if I should take a cup of tea up to Mother while I, it's still... I, I wouldn't do that, Roger. <laughs> She's upstairs at the moment, coping with Uncle Bertie. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Uncle Bertie. Poor Uncle Bertie. Someone coming through on green, Rick. <laughs> I'll be Alan from Sales if it's on green, Joel. Alan Sales, do you want to talk to him? No, that bloke gets up my nose. <laughs> I'll have a word with him, otherwise you'll hang up, you know, Alan. Yeah. Hello, George here. Hello, Alan. Who is it? It's Alan Sales on green. Oh, I've worked with him. Uh, Reg is just coming through on green, Alan. Uh, hello, Alan. It's, uh, it's uh, Reg here. Yes, I'll just hand you over to George, OK? George, it's Alan. Hello, Alan. <laughs> Reg has just handed me over on green. No, no, we've not got them. You haven't got the links. <laughs> you haven't got the links. Oh, God. Uh, Reg is just coming on green, Alan. Alan, I'll be very brief. Look, the links... <laughs> the links go through to you direct via admin, not via us. Read the orange handbook, love. <laughs> Alan, I appreciate your position, of course, but it's not really our pigeon. No, well, I'll get on to it for you and get back to you on blue, OK? <laughs> no, I can't really talk, cos he's, uh, he's here. <laughs> yes, I, I love you too. <laughs> how can he have not got the links? I don't know how he hadn't got them, but he hadn't got them. I'd better get on to Bernard right yeah. away. I bet Daphne's fouled the footpath here. <laughs> She's a weak link, you know, that yeah. Daphne. Sylvia, um, would you get me uh, Bernard, please? Yes. Bernard, um, sorry to trouble you, but I'm ringing up re some uh, lengths which are missing. I've got Alan on my back and the whole office is going mad up here. <laughs> yes, Bernard, there's no trace of dockets. I've been right through to Ronio. What are you on, John? I'm on yellow. Um, Reg is coming on yellow. Hello, Bernard. Reg here. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> There's Reg on yellow, uh, Bernard. Reg, I've just had a knock through file, but there's not a trace of a docket. Unless we have your docket, love, we can't move. No can't can do. Move. <laughs> move without a docket, love. No, our hands are tied. Mm. Yes, well, I'll get on to Dorian in maintenance, right? Mm. Bernard, George is getting on to Dorian maintenance. Uh, Sylvia, would you get me Dorian on grey, please? Did you really? What, Daphne? You ran the old toe. <laughs> uh, Dorian, Dorian, it's um, it's George here. I'm ringing up Reece some lengths which haven't been ronioed and we've got no trace of docketing through stereotype or yacht control. <laughs> yes, it does put us in a bit of a mind, so if you could pull out all the stops your end, I'd much appreciate it. Yes, I know, Bernard, it's not fair on us, it's not fair on you, is it? Mm? Anyway, I can't talk to you because he's here. <laughs> yeah, I love you too. Oh, I'm not here, I'm on to Dorian. No, Dorian, look, if you could do that for us, I'd very much appreciate it. <laughs> yes, that's what I told him. Hello? <laughs> oh, hello, Bob. How are you? It's Red here. Yeah. Um, George, it's, uh, it's Barbie on Red. Barbara who? Your wife. 
Um, you want to talk to her? No, tell her I'm on to Dorian on Grey, all right? <laughs> Barbara, love, uh, George can't talk to you, he's out. Um, I can't talk because he's here. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Is that Barbara? It's Barbara on red. Sorry, girl. hold on, I'll call you back on blue, right? Mm -hmm. You like to take it? Hello, Barbara. Love, you've come through on red again. <laughs> yes, how many times do I have to tell you not to come through on red? We're up for our eyes here. We've got lengths missing. Put yourself <laughs> in my position. We'll untie him and replace the strawberry jam. <laughs> and you. That was Barbara, just come through on me. Barbara on me? Yes, I can't understand it. You know, I think Daphne's the weak link in the chain here. Do you know what I think, Reg? What? I think, sorry, I'm talking to Reg. Um, <laughs> I think Bernard is mixing business with pleasure. Yeah. I mean, a 48 inch bust is all very well, <laughs> but it doesn't get the dockets in. <laughs> Hello? Uh, yes? Hello? Look, Alan, don't uh -huh. keep badgering. It's bloody bedlam up here. I've only got one pair of hands. Alan, I can confirm that. I've double-checked. He's only got one pair of hands. <laughs> Alan, I didn't yeah. invent the bloody rules. Read the orange handbook. No, Alan, love, if you're going to take that attitude, I'll check again via filing control. But it's water under the bridge. Hold on. Just checking, Reg. Right. Let's see. Wait a moment. <laughs> Alan, I've just double-checked. There's no trace of Doherty. <laughs> now, I'll call you back on blue. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Sylvia, I've just blown my nose. Uh, <laughs> would you get that Romeo docketed and stereotyped? We don't want any more mistakes, do we? Bye. Yes, hello. Who's that? It, it's Sybil. Sybil who? Sybil Thorndyke. What does she want? It's about the cider commercial. Staller, staller. Mm. Sybil, love, I've uh, been looking through the files. I'll have to be brief, we're in a bit of a pickle up here. We'd love to use you for the cider promotion, but we can't really promise anything at the moment. Wouldn't be fair to you, wouldn't be fair to us, would it, love? <laughs> <laughs> Very best of luck with St Joan, dear. OK? <laughs> Hello. Yes, but I can't really talk to you because he's here. <laughs> yes, I love you too. Oh. No, no, I can't hear you. This is a very bad line. Call me back on blue. Would you love there's a sweetheart? Mm. Just be nod to Fernando. It's a very bad line he's got down there. Yes, it's always bad there. Isn't always it? bad with Ferdy, and he's got no trace of dockets, and there's no sign of lengths. Well, it looks pretty dicey, doesn't it? I suppose I could just try getting on to lengths. Well, it's a chance in a million, isn't it? <laughs> Shot in the dark, but yeah. give it a whirl. Yeah. Sylvia, would you get me lengths, please? <laughs> Hello, Reg Lengths here. <laughs> Hello, Reg, it's George here. Hello, George. <laughs> Long time no, um, Long time no talky-talky. Certainly naughty-naughty. <laughs> Squire. All right, I'm sorry to trouble you at this late hour of the afternoon. Not I at all. I realise you must be up to your eyes down there. Well, we've got our headaches. I'm sure you've got your fair. <laughs> I'm sure you have, but I'm uh, ringing you up on the off chance. Read some lengths, which Alan has been on to me about. Yeah. The Montevideo lengths. Yeah. Are they by any chance down your way? They most certainly are, yes. We've had the Montevideo lengths here for four weeks. I was waiting for Alan from sales to pick him up first. I see. So you've got the lengths down there. Yeah. Well, this is much as I expected, Reg. Mm. Um, if you could get them up to me via transport and through central docketing, we can have them pulled and sent off to Romeo by Tuesday. <laughs> Only too pleased to oblige. Very nice talking to you. And you've got, by the way, I can't really talk because he's here. <laughs> but uh, you know how I feel. I love you too. I love you. <laughs> talking to Reg down at Lengths. So yeah. Apparently the Lengths are down there. You're joking. No, they've been down there. <laughs> Why didn't he send them straight up to Alan? Well, if you ask me, it's Daphne who's the weak link in this whole chain. <laughs> Hello, Flory. Hold on, darling. Hello. Um, George, to on no, yellow. I can't talk to you now. Uh, I'm on green. Uh, Sybil, I said I'd phone you back. Uh, okay. Look, I've uh, got the consignment off to Dorinda. Harry, we've got the yes. lens, but I've got to go to Dorinda. Brenda, no, I'm going mad up here. No, Hold on. Daphne, I'll see you by the march. Yes, Sir George, I'll be on the <laughs> 
if you just talk amongst yourselves for an hour. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Roger. Hello, Dr. Brentry. Hello. Come I'm in. I'm so sorry I'm late. That's quite all right. Yes. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Would you like to sit down or would you prefer to lie? Um, I'll sit. Thanks. Right, well, sit right <laughs> down. Now, tell me, how are you in yourself? Well, I'm, I'm really feeling rather in the pink. Oh, this is terrific. Yes. It's funny, really, you know, if anybody had told me that talking to psychiatrists would have uh, helped me at all, I'd have laughed in their faces, you yes. know. But I can honestly say that our little chats together have, have really been a tremendous benefit to me. Well, I'm so glad, Roger. Of course, a lot of people are instinctively very suspicious of psychiatry, and possibly, you know, with reason, but it can help in times. Well, I, I really think it can, because... Uh, you know, I've got so much more self-confidence now. Yes, yes, I'm, yes, I'm, yes. I'm much less self-conscious in, in the company of the opposite sex, which uh, I wasn't, as you know. You're less weeks. inhibited, are oh, you? I should say. Oh, and, this uh, is true. And the wonderful thing is, really, about it all, uh, well, uh, I'm in love. Well, this is wonderful news, Roger. You're in love with a woman? Yes. Oh, so, much, <laughs> so much the better. That's terrific. You know, it's so wonderful to be in love. I can't tell you the, the absolute joy I have. Well, love is a wonderful thing. I've been there myself. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> I mean, she's... This girl, this, this creature, this goddess, yes. she's so... You know, it's so right. Everything yes. is so yes, wonderful. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. You, know. really, you really click together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it's, it's so marvellous. But the only trouble is that, um, apart from this wonderful light hearted love that I have. I, yes, yes. I seem to be saddled with this tremendous burning sense of guilt. You have guilt as well as love. Well, this is, this is, um, this is unfortunate, Roger. You know, sex is the most natural, healthy thing in the world. There's no reason at all to have any guilt about it. I mean, why would you have guilt about sex? It's a lovely, beautiful thing, Roger. Well, it's, it's not really as simple as that. You know, it's, um, it's rather difficult to explain. Um, <laughs> I, I don't really know where to start. We'll begin at the beginning, that's always the best place. Uh, what's the girl's name? Stephanie. Stephanie, that's a lovely name, isn't it? Well, it's my wife's name, in fact, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's Stephanie. Yes, it's Stephanie. No, it's Stephanie. Yes, it's Stephanie, Roger. Right <laughs> yes, it's, it's Stephanie. It's your wife. Oh, you're Stephanie. in love with my wife, Stephanie. Yes. Well, this is a perfectly understandable thing, Roger. Right? <laughs> She's a very attractive woman. I married her myself. I don't see why you should feel upset about that. But she's in love with me. Well, this again is perfectly understandable, Roger. <laughs> I mean, you're a perfectly attractive human being, as I've told you over the last few weeks. There's nothing repulsive about you, is there? There's no reason why a highly sexed woman such as Stephanie shouldn't fall in love with you. And I must explain to you, Roger, that I'm a very busy man. I have many, many patients to see. I see rather less of my wife, perhaps, than I should. And I think it's very understandable that she should seek some sort of companionship outside the marriage. I don't think that's unreasonable but at she's all. But not, she's not seeking anything outside marriage, Dr. Braintree, and nor am I. We want to get married. Well, this again, I think, is <laughs> Perfectly understandable. After all, you're two young people in love. You want to manifest your love feelings within the confines of a bourgeois society through marriage. I think this is very appropriate. The other thing is, you see, I should feel so grateful to you for what you've done for me. And, and all I can feel is this, this burning jealousy. I can't bear the thought of you touching her. Well, of course you can't. I can understand it. <laughs> it's uh, tremendously possessive about someone one loves you, and it's tremendously possessive. It would be unhealthy not to have this jealousy reaction, Roger. But don't you see, I, I hate you for Of course it. you I hate, hate you me, for Roger. Being so near her. Yes, of course you hate me, Roger. You love to hate the one who loves the one you hate to love to love. <laughs> 
This is a very old rule, Roger. There's nothing to feel ashamed about. He's absolutely reasonable. Don't you understand? I'm, I want to kill you. Of course you want to kill me, because by killing me, Roger, you eradicate the one you hate. This is a perfectly natural reaction, Roger. You're so reasonable, aren't you? Yes, I am. You understand it all so yes, much. You're yes, so logical. Yes, I am. It's my I'm going job, to have Roger. to kill you now. Uh, Roger, this is a little inconvenient, because I have another patient at 6.30, and then there's somebody else at 7 after that. I wonder if you could make it sometime next week. <laughs> could you make it early in the week, sir? When? When do you think? How are you fixed, <laughs> How are you fixed on Wednesday morning, say at 9.30? Would that be convenient? Uh, yes, that's perfect. Right, well, um, if you could pop along at 9.30 and kill me then. <laughs> Once again, Dr. Braintree, I'm, I'm amazed, you know, really. I'm so grateful to you for... You know, showing me the way. It's what I'm here for, Roger. Thank you so much. Thank you. And with a bit of luck, this should be the last time you need to visit me. <laughs>